Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGu, and this laptop beside me is the CyberPower Tracer 3. This laptop cost £1,249 here in the UK, and it's another laptop with the latest 8th gen Intel 6 core processors. This one is specifically the i7-8750H. Alongside that we also have a GTX 1060 graphics card, the display is a 15.6 inch 1080p panel, we also have a 250GB Samsung 970 EVO which is a very new NVMe drive, there's also a 1TB Seagate Barracuda hard drive and lastly 16GB of DDR4 memory. So in terms of the design, the first thing you'll notice about this laptop is undoubtedly the lid. It's got this kind of two-tone brushed metal and carbon fiber appearance, but what you do need to know about the Tracer 3 is that it's actually made from plastic. So it's not real brushed aluminum and it's not real carbon fiber on the top and nor is it on the inside. That being said, build quality is still good despite the construction being plastic. There's very little, if any, keyboard flex and also the hinge is good enough quality that you can lift it one-handed, which is a feature I very much appreciate. Now in terms of the physical dimensions and weight, the most important thing to note about the Tracer 3 is it weighs 2.4 kilograms and it's just under three centimeters thick with the official rating being 29.5 millimeters thick. What that means is it's not a hugely portable ultralight gaming laptop, for instance, in the vein of the MSI GS65 or the new Razer Blade 15. However, it's by no means an absolute gaming monster either, so you would still be able to carry this around in your backpack no problem, it's just going to weigh you down that little bit more than the likes of the MSI GS65. One of the benefits of the slightly thicker chassis, however, is that I.O. is absolutely plentiful. Starting on the right hand side here, we've got two USB 2.0 ports, while on the left hand side there's another two USB 2.0 ports, as well as headset jacks and an SD card reader. Around the back there's even more, we've got an HDMI output, there's a full size Ethernet port and there's also two USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A ports and another which is in the Type C form factor just next to it. Lastly there's also a Kensington lock and the power input around the back. So then once we open the lid of the laptop the first thing we notice is the 15.6 inch panel on the Tracer 3. So this is the Full HD resolution 1920 by 1080 which I think is perfectly sharp across the 15.6 inch diagonal display. However, one thing that is worth noting is it's a 60Hz refresh rate. A lot of the more expensive gaming laptops we're seeing these days are either 120Hz or maybe even 144Hz which certainly helps with titles like eSports and I know personally I'd much rather to game at a higher refresh rate than something like the 60Hz panel on this. That being said though, I do know plenty of people actually who are perfectly happy gaming at 1080p 60. Uh, so if that's an issue for you, you might need to be looking at slightly more expensive laptops. But considering the Tracer 3 is only £1,249, I don't think we could feasibly expect a high refresh rate panel at this price. It's also an IPS panel as well, which means we get nice and punchy colours. Viewing angles are actually really, really good. And there is also a pleasing range of brightness, which I found made it very easy to use the Tracer 3 in well-lit environments, for instance. And there's also an anti-glare coating on the panel as well, which reduces reflections further. Just below that panel, we have a pair of two watt speakers and there's also a three watt subwoofer on the underside of the laptop. I would class these as average at best. They're, you know, they're not hugely amazing, but they'll get the job done for YouTube videos. Much more interesting, however, is actually the keyboard. And that is because it is fully mechanical, which at £1,249, I think is an absolutely fantastic inclusion. Mechanical keyboards are becoming more and more common on gaming laptops, but usually they command a significant price premium. So to have one included here at this price I think is fantastic. The keyboard itself I do find to be a little bit cramped and that's because there is a numpad on the far hand side so there's very little spacing between the keys but the actual key stroke is very very pleasing. It's got a kind of clicky tactile feeling essentially like a low profile Cherry MX Blue Switch. I did have an issue when I first got the laptop that there was a stuck equals key whenever I was typing random equal signs would be popping in and out and it was very frustrating. I got in touch with CyberPower about this and they issued a new BIOS and that has fixed the issue completely. So it was obviously some kind of software or firmware issue. The keyboard is also RGB and that is controlled in the Gaming Center app. The app is again a bit disappointing. When I first started testing this laptop, it was causing my Uplay games like Far Cry 5 to crash completely. Uh, and that was fixed again with the new version of Gaming Center. However, it's still quite basic 
Uh, the effects aren't you know overwhelming. It's nothing like Corsair Q or Razer Synapse, for instance. So I would suggest maybe just pick one effect you're happy with and leave it there. The typing experience on a whole though, thanks to those low profile clicky and tactile switches though, I really, really like it. So I'm really pleased to see a mechanical keyboard on a laptop of this price. Just below the keyboard, we of course have the trackpad and immediately you'll probably be thinking it is a bit small. Considering there's so much space around the trackpad that hasn't been used, I would have liked to see it be a lot larger in the vein of the, the new MacBook as well as the Razer Blade 15. However, the tracking experience itself is fine. What annoys me most though, is the fact that for some reason, the trackpad is actually set into this little groove, which means the bottom edge is actually recessed slightly. So whenever you're tracking or scrolling your finger and you come into the corners, you'll find you'll be rubbing up against the edge of the little groove. And I just found it to be a bit annoying. It would kind of distract you from whatever you were doing and it would just get in the way. I don't know why it couldn't have just been a completely flush trackpad, which is what almost every other manufacturer does. It's just a, a small issue which you just wonder why have they done that, it's just a bit of a pain. However, as I mentioned, the tracking experience is fine. I had no issues using gestures or anything like that. The trackpad service itself is nice and smooth. So, you know, I was able to scroll around and just type up some Word documents with that, no problem. But of course, for any serious gaming, you are gonna to want to use a mouse. So now moving on from the keyboard and the display, we're gonna to turn to the underside of the laptop. And it seems there's no easy way to get to the CPU and GPU. However, there is a separate panel towards the bottom of the laptop, which can be removed by just taking out four small screws. Removing this panel gives you access to the battery, two M.2 slots, as well as one 2.5 inch drive caddy, and there's also two sodium slots. Both memory slots are currently occupied with an eight gigabyte stick each, which is running at 2400 megahertz. However, there is one spare M.2 slot, which makes it very easy to slot in uh, additional SSD, and that can support PCIe or SATA drive. So a very easy upgrade path there. The one terabyte Seagate Barracuda obviously occupies the 2.5 inch drive caddy. And again, this is very easily removed. So if you want to drop in maybe a larger SSD or an even larger hard drive, that is again, a very easy upgrade. Lastly, the battery is only rated at 46 watt hours. So we will get to the battery life results later on, but that is a relatively small cell. So again, not going in with too high hopes for the battery life of this machine. Now then, moving on to performance. As we mentioned, the core components are the six core i7-8750H, and there's also a GTX 1060 six gigabyte with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. In all the charts, you will see we have compared the Tracer 3 with two versions of the MSI GS65, one with a full fat GTX 1060 and the other with a GTX 1070 Max-Q, as well as the Gigabyte Aero 15X, which again has a GTX 1070 Max-Q. The reason we've done this is because all of the graphics cards are relatively similar. There's not a whole lot between GTX 1060 and GTX 1070 Max-Q, while all four laptops share the same i7-8750H processor. So as you can see, overall performance of the Tracer 3 is very, very solid. We can see a consistent one to four FPS deficit when compared to the GS65, which obviously isn't major, but looking into this a little bit further revealed, that was because the GTX 1060 in the Tracer 3 was kind of boosting to around the 1550, 1570 megahertz mark, whereas the MSI GS65 GTX 1060 was running around 100 megahertz faster, which explains the slight increase in performance. I do find this just a little bit disappointing considering the Tracer 3 is a bit thicker, so you would expect there to be more room for cooling, thus better cooling equals higher frequencies for Pascal GPUs thanks to GPU Boost 3.0. However, that's not the case, it's not the end of the world. As I mentioned, it was only between one and four FPS in the games we tested, but it's just something to point out. Now, moving on to thermals, as mentioned, the graphics card peaked at 77 degrees and this is a bit lower than the other ones we've seen which we would say is because as mentioned it was running that little bit slower. Slightly more interesting though is the CPU temperature and as you can see it's a fair few degrees cooler than the other three laptops we compared it to. Looking into this further it turns out the CPU is doing something very strange with its core frequencies. Most CPUs and other laptops for instance when stressed will settle on a slightly lower all-core speed. For instance, the MSI GS65, the all-cores would hit 2.8 gigahertz, which isn't overly fast, but it was consistent across the board. With the Tracer 3, however, all of the cores were doing something completely different to each other at any given moment. So when running ADA64, at any given moment, 
one core could be running at 2.4 gigahertz, whereas uh, one other could be running at up to 3.9 gigahertz, and the others would be anywhere in between. There didn't seem to be any real consistency. At first I thought, you know, that's very strange, surely that's gonna hurt performance. But checking back with our CPU benchmarks, particularly Cinebench, and you can also see the physics results from the 3D Mark test we ran, the CyberPower 3 is actually outscoring the MSI GS65, despite this strange CPU frequency behavior. So honestly, I'm not quite sure why it's doing this. We know Intel's new mobile CPUs are a lot more dynamic, so they don't all tend to boost up to the same frequency and stay there like they did in the past, with older generations, for instance. But as mentioned, it doesn't look like it hurts performance at all. In fact, the Tracer 3 outperforms the GS65 in that regard. So in that regard, it is definitely worth noting. However, it doesn't look like it's a negative point. It's just a piece of strange behavior from the processor. Next, we come on to noise levels and you can actually activate 100% fan speed on the Tracer 3 by pressing this dedicated button just here at the top of the laptop. And that will start all the fans spinning up to 100%. And you should now be able to hear it on my microphone. But honestly, it's actually not that loud. I've recently tested the Aorus X9 DT, for instance, and that was significantly louder and significantly more rackety. The Tracer 3, by comparison, is much easier on the ears. The overall volume is definitely lesser. I measured it at a peak of 50 decibels, and the sound of that as well is also a lot less whiny than it has been on other gaming laptops I've tested. So noise levels definitely in the Tracer 3's favor. Lastly, we come to battery life. And as mentioned, it's a 46 watt hour battery cell. It lasted two hours and 19 minutes in our standard PC Mark 8 test, which isn't great. We wouldn't expect a stellar score from a gaming laptop, but it is worth noting, you will want to keep that power brick with you just to be on the safe side. So then that is our look at the CyberPower Tracer 3. Overall, is it a laptop you should be buying? I think it is, provided you're happy with gaming at 1080p 60Hz, it proves to be actually a very good bang for buck option. It obviously isn't as portable or as premium as the likes of the MSI GS65 or the Razer Blade 15, but then again it is considerably cheaper and you still get the impressive bang for buck offered by the 6 core i7 as well as the GTX 1060. It even has its own benefits as well like the mechanical keyboard and impressively low noise levels. So I'm Dominic Fukit Guru. We are happy to recommend the CyberPower Tracer 3. If you like this video you can give us a thumbs up. You can also leave a comment below and subscribe. Make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified about all our future videos and lastly we'd love to chat with you on social media as well. But until then I will see you in the next video.